Greetings, everyone. Well, hey, I have an interesting story for you today. You know, the Lord speaks to us in ways that we are going to understand, and still we need to search out what the Lord is talking to us about. And um, just a few days ago, I had a dream where I, I was like several dreams, probably three or four dreams, where everyone in my dreams were running in and out of these houses looking for Bruno. They kept saying, where is Bruno? They're all looking for Bruno. And I woke up, I thought, Lord, why is everybody looking for Bruno? Well, it reminded me of the little Disney movie that I watched with my grandchildren on New Year's Day. And it was called Encanto. And in that movie, everybody saying, there's a song they say, we don't talk about Bruno. Well, why not? <laughs> okay, now, Bruno, let me say this. Bruno means free and it means in God's grace. So in my dream, I think everybody's looking for God's grace. Scripture for that is Philippians 419. God shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So everybody in my dream was looking for God's grace. They're looking for Bruno. So I thought, okay, I know the Lord is speaking to me about and through this movie. So I'm not going to tell you the whole movie, but kind of a recap on that. It's uh, an enchanted village in the very beginning. You know, it's a three generational storyline. Grandmother, her three children, they were triplets in the beginning. They're just babies and uh, her husband is killed. So she has these three babies, but she's given a candle of hope a light, just like we are light, okay? We are the hope in the earth this day. So she was given this candle and it was an enchanted, a magical candle. So her whole casita, her home, the village was, and her bloodline was blessed. So everybody in her bloodline received uh, magical gifts. And some was uh, hearing, uh, one was supernatural strength, one was like flowers, uh, everything. If she wanted to create flowers for anything and everything, she could. Well, like when the child turned five in this bloodline, when the child turned about five years old, they received their magical gift. So the last little boy, he came to receive his gift, which was speaking to animals. But his little sister, the main character, Mirabelle, she had never received her gift. At the time she came to receive her gift, the light went out. So the whole storyline is basically around her and her receiving her gift, why she didn't. She was really the gift. One of the triplets, his name was Bruno, and he had a gift of prophecy. But he, and like with prophets of old and even today, they prophesy something that you don't want to hear, you cast them out, you turn them off. We, we don't want to hear it. So he basically left uh, 10 years earlier before the main plot of this story takes place. And in reality, he was hiding within the walls of the casita. Is Jesus still in the walls of the church? Yes, indeed, he is. Many people don't wanna face it, hear it, see him. They kind of forget that he exists, but he's still there. He hasn't left. He's not left his church. He loves the church. So. The little girl, she is wondering that the, as the little boy, her cousin receives his gift of speaking to the animals. She sees this crack in the foundation. Has there been a crack in our foundation? Absolutely. But it's being restored, the apostles and prophets, on the foundation. That is the foundation, but Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. So she sees this when she tells her grandmother. Grandmother's upset. So long story short, there's repentance that takes place. There's restoration that takes place. There's pointing of the fingers. But then you see the prophecy was true and it did come true. Little Mirabelle, she goes looking for her uncle and she finds him and she understands the prophecy and she begins piecing it together. She feels that she's the fault of things. In reality, she isn't they have uh, cast her out. You know, old time religion is gonna come against 
That's what grandma reminds me of, like old time religion. She was not willing to look at the gift of this young child. She was the prophecy and she had a prophetic gift. So as the, uh, the girl sees the crack in the foundation, it does come to pass. And of course, then she's really cast out. But the family is restored. There's repentance that takes place. The generations are restored. And the family's restored. It's, and the grandmother realizes this. It's not just the gifts, okay? She said the real gift was not the powers because that's what they were really looking for. And is that what we've been looking for? A lot of us in the body of Christ, it's not, we've been looking at the gift that people possess, not the giver of the gifts. But she realized it, it wasn't, it was never the powers, but it was the family itself. And that's why I feel right now, God is seeing through this, and you, you can watch a movie, there's so much more I could say about this, but it's, God is restoring his family, okay? It's not about the gifts, it's about him. It's the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. You see, in the beginning, she had this supernatural candle and it began, you know, to create many things there and made this an enchanted place, a, a magical place for them. You know, we could say a supernatural place. He is the light of the world. We can't let our light go out. We are the hope in the earth this day, but he is the light and the life. So, um, I believe that God is restoring the body of Christ through his people. And just like uh, the family was restored, the family, the body of Christ, you know, we, we tend to shun another ministry or uh, denomination because of certain doctrines, what have you. But if we look at Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, and we look at him as the the life and the light of the world and we look at him as he's the one we should be following we can put our differences aside and that that foundation is going to be restored where there is a major crack you know in this movie everything was destroyed everything but when they realized what the real gift was and it was the family or we could say the body of Christ with him as the head of this body. And they began to build together. Everything was restored. The light came back. And it's a light that's never, ever going to go out. You know, there's been, like I said, the Lord has never left the church. It's many times he's just not welcome there because we throw out the baby with the bathwater. I think that the Lord's speaking a lot through this. There's, like I said, many other things that I could say regarding this. Um, but I feel the prophetic gift, actually the prophet himself being the Lord Jesus Christ, he has been overlooked. And we need to get back to the basics, get back to really seeking him. He is the gift. And as we do, we are the sons and daughters of light. His light is never going to go out. And as long as we're seeking him, seeking his face, following him, there may be things that will come against us, but, um, you know, we stand strong in him and we possess that light in the earth this day. We will overcome and the foundation is being restored and it's the sons and daughters in the earth this day. The real true prophetic gift, I thought that was uh, significant also. Bruno had the gift of prophecy, but people didn't want to hear it. You know, I was reading about in Isaiah this morning, Isaiah 6. It wasn't until uh, King Uzziah died. He was a leper. He touched. He was in the temple touching, offering incense that he had no business doing. God had to get rid of him on the, when he died, in the year he died. That's when uh, Isaiah saw the glory of the Lord in the host of God's army. He saw him. And 
that is when things began to form and he was sent out. So I believe God is looking for those sent ones, okay? Those who are gonna carry that torch, that light of his, of his likeness, of his glory and his power in this day. So be blessed in all that you do until next time. Amen.